Welcome to Wearable Wednesday. Today we'll be talking all about conductive thread. What's it made out of? How does it work? What's it good for? What's it not good for? And other tips, tricks, and techniques to get you sewing pixels like a pro in no time. Let's get started. A great beginner project for conductive thread is to make a pair of touchscreen compatible gloves. Just sew a bit of conductive yarn into the tip of the finger, leaving the tails inside the finger of the glove. The yarn conducts from the screen inside the glove to your finger, so you don't have to take your gloves off to use your phone. This thread is stainless steel, but the fuzziness of the yarn will make sure it won't scratch the glass. Here's an embroidered circuit I made in 2008 with a silver plated nylon thread, and over time the filings that comprise the plating tarnish and oxidize and prevent electrons from being able to flow. The thread turns black and the circuit stops working. It's so sad. I highly recommend using an embroidery hoop to stabilize your fabric, especially if you're new to sewing in general. It'll hold the fabric taut like the head of a drum, so all you have to worry about is where the thread goes. It's easiest to thread your needle when the thread has a clean cut edge that's been moistened a little bit. Conductive thread acts like uninsulated wire, so when we're making circuits with it, you have to make sure to secure the tails of the thread so they don't flop around and uh, cause any short circuits. One way to do that is, as you see here, to take the needle on the back of your work and twist it in between previous stitches and then cut the tail short. Different types of stitches will have different functional and aesthetic qualities that you'll want to know about before you begin your project, so do your research on some basic hand embroidery stitches. Here I'm doing a basic running stitch, but I'm also catching the tail of the thread uh, on the exterior of the garment. It kind of like traces where the power line goes as well as supplies an additional conductor. My favorite way to seal the ends of conductive thread is with clear nail polish. And you just dab a little bit on the knot, let it dry, and then cut it short. Otherwise, the knots have a tendency to loosen because the steel is such a springy substance. But if you seal them like this, the connections will be very strong and last a really long time. This thread has a tendency to get very twisted, and so if you're having that problem, just let it hang out. If you're sewing on a very thick garment like this jacket, you can use a pair of pliers to help pull the needle through the fabric. Your multimeter is a critical tool in any wearable project, and you should make sure you check for shorts before you power up your project. For small components like these smart pixels, I like to seal in the components with clear nail polish. It just helps me double ensure I won't have any shorts in my circuit. These RGB smart pixels share power and ground lines but need one short data connection between each pixel as they chain together. Here you can see that instead of tying a knot at each end of this short connection, I'm making it doubled over with one length of thread tied in one knot in the center of the junction. The pixels in this jacket are all working fine, but if one of your pixels not lighting up, it can prevent all of the rest of them in the chain from lighting up as well. So to identify the bad pixel, use alligator clips to short the data pin from your flora to the next possible working pixel. Then you can figure out which one's wrong, find out what's wrong in the circuit, and repair or replace it. These pixels can draw a lot of current, so conductive thread might not be the best material to use for power and ground rails for large quantities of pixels. For just a few though, it works great, and we'll show you how to make this jacket in an upcoming episode, so now's a great time to subscribe. You should always use the right tool for the job, and in this TV Be Gone jacket tutorial, I showed you how to use stranded wire to carry the current from the battery pack in the pocket up to the lapel, and conductive thread to make a zipper switch. It's activated when the metal zipper pull passes by two small pads of conductive thread. All of the projects mentioned in this video are linked in the description below, and there's a tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System with even more info on conductive thread. I can't wait to see your wearable project in the Adafruit Flickr pool or on our weekly show and tell on Google+. 
So if you like our videos, don't forget to give us a like, a share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube.